Akuzasne is a unique community who is on upstate New York, uh, Quebec, in Quebec and Ontario. And um, we uh, have been in our in existence prior to any borders being placed upon our community. One of the treaties that affects our community um, is the Jay Treaty. Um, the Jay Treaty, uh, to be clear, is, um, is not an Aboriginal treaty, but it's a treaty uh, that, that does confirm uh, First Nations border crossing rights and adds constitutional protection to those rights. I think in the context of uh, the Truth and Reconcilia uh, Reconciliation Commission in the practical way, uh, to, way to implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, there is a bit of, um, um, there is some bridging here between the Jay Treaty, um, the Truth and Reconciliation um, recommendations, and the United Nations on Declaration of uh, Indigenous People. The uh, Jay Treaty states it's clear that all times to be free to Her Majesty's subject to the citizens of the United States and also to the Indians dwelling on either side of the said boundary lines free, freely to pass and repass by land or inland navigation. Now for some of the northern communities and people that don't generally pass through the border, um, this is not, uh, there's not a huge impact. But for my community, being in the, the dissect of two provinces, uh, two countries and one state uh, it is clearly uh, very important to our people and other Haudenosaunee communities who happen to be uh, near the border. <clears throat> the, uh, in, in the respective territories and countries of the two parties on the continent of the Americas, the country within the limits of the Hudson Bay Com Company only, only accepted and to navigate all the lakes and waters here to and freely to carry on trade and commerce with each other. That's right in the Jay Treaty. No duty shall ever, no, no duty of entry shall ever be levied to either party or penalty brought by land or inland navigation into the said territories respectively, nor shall Indians passing or repassing through their own, with their own goods and effects ever, whatever natural pay or same any import or duties whatsoever. But goods and bales or other large packages unusual amongst the Indians shall not be considered as goods belonging to Indians. So that's the language right, right from the, uh, what the uh, Jay Treaty is. The Jay Treaty affirms that Indians on either side of the international border have the right to freely pass and repass land or inland navigation. It is said that the same Indians do not have to pay for the same the same on any imports or duties whatsoever, bringing their own goods and, and effects into, into their community. Honoring the truth and reconciliation for the future, summary of the final report on Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls for reconciliation, coming to terms with the events of the past in a manner that overcomes conflict and establishes a respective healthy relationship amongst people going forward. It states, Reconciliation must inspire Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal people to transform Canadian society so that our children, grandchildren can live together in dignity, peace, prosperity, and on these lands we now share. And I will like to point out that um, those are some of the fundamental principles in the two row wampum also that uh, Joe spoke about earlier. The three um, white strips represent, represent that. The TRC, in order to redress the legacy the legacy of residential school and advanced the process of Canadians reconciliation made 94 calls to action. Call to action 45 states. We call upon the Canadian government on behalf of Canadians to jointly develop with Aboriginal people a royal proclamation of reconciliation to be issued by the Crown. The proclamation would build on the royal proclamation of 1763 and the Treaty of Niagara, which uh, David earlier had, rep had uh, mentioned and reaffirms nation-to-nation -nation relationship between Aboriginal people and the Crown. Call to action 43 states. We call upon the, the federal, provincial, territorial, municipal governments to fully adopt and implement, implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People as a framework for reconciliation. Article 36 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People states, Indigenous people, in particular, those divided by international borders, have the right to maintain and develop 
contact, relationships, and cooperations, including activities for spiritual, cultural, political, economic, and social purposes with their own members as well as other people crossing the borders. The, action, the call to actions 45 and, and 43 of the TRC provides a strong rationale for the examination of the J Treaty and border crossing issues of First Nations. The rationale of the J Treaty and its affirmation of First Nations border crossing rights should be part of a development of a Royal Proclamation of Reconciliation. It's an excellent case study for the challenges associated with maintaining and developing contact relationships, cooperation in its own members, as well as people crossing the border. The Mohawks of Akwesasne have a unique indigenous border community. Half of our community resides in the province of Quebec in Ontario, and half of the community resides in the United States and, and, and in the state of New York. The Mohawk Council of Aksasne is the federally recognized First Nation community with a, with a membership of approximately 12,000. Aksasne is geograph geographically landlocked by, by the St. Saint Lawrence River. The only way to get from one of the three districts under the, under the governance of the Mohawk Council is to travel through the United States portion of the community and travel back into Canada to reach one of the other two districts in Quebec or its Ontario district. The travel, the travel route is necessary just to go on about our daily lives for school, work, attending church, shopping, recreational, social, or cultural purposes. One cannot travel into Canada from any of the other three districts of the Mohawk Council without going through the Canada Border Service, Service Agency Port of Entry. Mohawks continue as they have done since Confederation to exercise their rights and maintain a develop to develop contacts, relationships, and cooperation with their two Quebec districts. However, in 2009, CBSA imposed personal hardship upon the Mohawk residents of the Ontario district when refusing, when returning to their district, they were forced to leave Akwesasne community to report to CBSA in Cornwall, in Cornwall sorry, and, and then return to their district of, of Gawanoga. We would like to acknowledge that CBSA has taken positive steps to address mobility within the, Ontario within the Ontario District. School buses and emergency vehicles are exempt from the reporting requirements. Funerals that involve burials in the Ontario District are also exempt from the reporting requirements. As the local leadership, we have been working with the uh, Canada Border Service Agency to find um, some political solutions to some of the border challenging issues. But as I've outlined in, the, in, in my presentation, there are some political ways that uh, between the Truth and Reconciliation Commission uh, recommendations, the uh, United Nations Declaration on Indigenous People, which the current government has uh, signaled that they will fully implement, and also with the, um, um, the creation of a royal proclamation that there are avenues that do exist in bringing these instruments together to recognize the treaties uh, in, uh, excuse me, particularly the J Treaty, which impacts uh, indigenous people on every side of the border. This one, um, like I had mentioned earlier, between the two row wampum and the J Treaty are significant treaties for our community. I will say that with respect to the two row wampum, um, the belt is regularly recited in our communities and it continues to form, and we continue, it continues to inform uh, the people and the consciousness of our citizens. And in the spirit of the two row wampum, um, a number of our people continued, uh, refused to participate in elections, both at the ban, at the ban council level or including the municipal, provincial and federal. Refused to participate in censuses, refused jury duty, as well as refused military services. And some of these can be uh, classified as extreme, um, extreme actions. But those are the principles in which our people uh, continue to exercise the two row wampum of today. That principle, the two, the two purple, um, the two purple um, rows on there that signify the European and the indigenous. Um, those every day exercising of keeping our rights and not participating in the system, not participating in census, is how our people continue today to exercise the rights as indigenous people and the principal issues of the two-row wampum. So, 
With that, I don't want to hold you up too much longer. As Joe had said earlier, um, there's a lot of things that have already been said uh, prior to me coming up, and there's a lot of good words, and uh, clearly uh, he has taken away half of my presentation. Is not here to know uh, that some of the extra things that I've added uh, to a bit of that, but he did a very good job. And I do, again, want to thank the organizers for at least having the opportunity to talk about one of the treaties that affect our community and some of the practical uh, things that we are doing to um, look to either have them implemented or how do we deal with it every day in our everyday lives. Thank you. Thank you.